shadows Step out of the grave Break into the wild And don't be afraid Run into wide open spaces Graces waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted Graces waiting Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom, there is freedom Where the Spirit of the Lord is Welcome to One and All Kids. It's the last week in our Dive Deep series learning about growing in wisdom. We have already grown so much and I can't wait to grow even more. Our memory verse is from James 1.5 which says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Memorizing this verse can help us to remember that we can always go to God for wisdom no matter what. Last week, we learned about hanging out with wise people. This week is about how we can always be growing in wisdom. So let's go learn. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back for 
another game, and we have Julianne in the hizzy, Woo! Josh in the hizzy, me in the hizzy, Woo! and then we have a. Yeah, Tyler, yeah, what's this third Bible, Bible. about? We have like a special guest. Oh! Oh! Hey, what do you think? What are you doing here? Uh, I just came to play some amazing games with you guys. All this right. Is what Ethan, tell, tell the kids something cool about yourself. Uh, when I was little, I loved basketball, so I one time scored 60 points in a game, which is pretty cool. Whoa. Yeah. I, know. I don't even know I scored that many in my life. I'm terrible at basketball, so that's really impressive. Wow, yeah. okay, now we know who to go to for games. But we got but the Bible. is he Let's talented go. at sword drills? Sword we will drills. find out. We're about to find out. This is actually a special edition of sword drills. Not only are there three of you, but in order to win, you're gonna have to do something pretty unique. So normally how we play sword drills, and for all of you out there in the rooms, you can go ahead and grab your Bibles because you're gonna play along with us. Normally how it works is I will read out a verse and they have to find it, but not only find it, but read it. The first one to find it and finish reading it typically wins the point. But this time, if you find the verse and read it first. You have two options. You can grab a foam block from beneath the table and either add it to your own tower or you can take away a foam block from someone else's tower. That's right. Sabotage is the name of the game. Now, the first person to stack three foam blocks on top of each other wins the game. Are you guys ready? Ready, ready. ready. All right, so hands on top of the Bible. Hands on top of the Bible. You cannot start right, turning first. until I say go. Here we go. Ready. Your first verse. First Corinthians 6, 19. First Corinthians 6, 19. Go. First Corinthians 6, 19. No! know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. Congratulations, Julianne. No, you can fast. sabotage. Oh, they There's don't have any. Sabotage. Sabotage. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Like, push the other person. Next, ver next verse. Next verse. Acts 1, 8. Go. Acts 1, No way. <laughs> But you will oh. receive power when the Holy right. Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That is correct. Julian is up what? two. <laughs> Game to might nothing. be over quick. You need sabotage Jeez. or Ethan. Come on, sabotage. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna find out. We're come gonna back, find out. Back. All right, here we go. To like big Zach Page. Come back, come back. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Isaiah okay. eleven two. Go. Isaiah, where are you? Yeah. 11, right? 11-2 or 1-2? Isaiah, 11-2. Ah. And at the last minute, I'm going to switch it up got, on you. Romans 8-26. Ah. You're switching to Romans 8-26. That was right there. Romans. Who knew the curveballs that I can throw at you at any point? You can. Romans what? 8.26. Got it. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through words, wordless groans. Good job, oh. Ethan. Oh. Sabotaging oh. Julian. Savage. Yes. Yes. Oh. Nice. Yes. All right, close your Bibles, close your Bibles. I might just throw out random verses in the middle and you gotta switch with me. Here we go. John 14, 15 through 17. John 14, 15 through 17. Go. Oh, oh the pages are so sticky. John, John 14. 14. 15 through 17. 17. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in 
Congratulations. Now, Ethan and Josh, remember, while she's reading, you can still find it and read faster than her. Oh. If you finish the verse before she finishes it, you win the point. That's why I'm trying to read her. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Speaking of long verses, this one, this one's three verses long, so you'll have a chance to catch up if you're close to finding it. Here we go. Psalms 52, one through three. Psalms 52, one through three. Ready? It's right in the middle of your Bible. Go. Is that cheating if you gave us a hint? Two, one, I gave it to all of you though, so. Three. Oh. Psalms 52. Why do you boast of evil, you mighty hero? Why do you boast all day long? You are a disgrace in the eyes of God. Uh, you who Why practice the same, you tell your blessed destruction is like sharp and razor. Your love rather than good, falsehood rather than speaking the truth. Ethan got it! Ethan got it! It was so out of here. close. I found it, but then I, he was already in the middle. So <laughs> close. Okay. Nice job, nice job. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, John 3, 6 through 8. John 3, 6 through 8. Ready, go. Josh, I'm looking for you to pull ahead here. <laughs> I'm trying, man. John 3, 6 through 8. Come on. Flesh blood gives birth flesh to flesh, 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 flesh,
It is time to get on with service. Ethan, thank you for joining us. Excited yeah. to have you for games this month. It's going to be a blast. Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Josh, and this is our last week of our Dive Deep series. Hopefully you have grown in wisdom and learned a little bit about what it means to make wise choices in living for the Lord. Our bottom line this week is never stop growing in wisdom. One more time, never stop growing in wisdom. Today, we head into the New Testament to discover more about something written in the book of Romans. Paul was a follower of Jesus, but he also was tra a traveling missionary who started many churches. He wasn't always able to be at those churches, so he would often write letters to them, encouraging them, challenging them, and even correcting them. Paul had not yet been to Rome, but he wanted to go and he knew that there was a church there and wanted to encourage the Jesus followers that were at that church. So he wrote them a letter, just like he often did to the churches that he started. Paul taught a lot in the letters he wrote. He had learned the Jewish law from a highly skilled teacher named Gamaliel. He also learned about Jesus from other church leaders who had also taught him soon after he became a follower of Jesus himself. These letters were chock full of wisdom. Romans 12, 2, it says this. Check this out. Okay, grab your Bibles. We're going to go to Romans 12, 2. And uh, go ahead and turn in there. It's going to be in the New Testament, kind of towards the end of the Bible direction. Keep flipping. Keep flipping till you get to Romans. Oh, I think I went too far. Hold on. Get back here. Mm -hmm. Romans 12, 2. You guys almost there? All right, we're reading Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Man, that's good. The world we live in has a lot of messages every day about what life is about or what is truly important. And we can watch shows, we can listen to music, we can hang out on YouTube or even just try to get past a zillion commercials that we see every day. It's a constant stream of messages about life. Some of them are good and totally fine. Some are eh, kind of neutral and Honestly, some can be pretty harmful. Like I said, we hear a lot of messages throughout the day, but God has messages too. You are deeply loved no matter what. You were created on purpose for a purpose. You were made to love God and to love others. You will never find lasting joy chasing after any temporary stuff. Those are the messages that we need in our lives. We don't want to conform to the world's messages and patterns, but instead, we want to focus on God's messages to us. We want to let God's word transform us and our minds so that they're renewed and that we're able to be more wise in how we live out our lives. Growing in wisdom is a choice that we have to make every single day. We have to choose to shut the world's messages out and let God's messages in. Practicing that each day is called being spiritually disciplined. It means having habits or practices that focus our lives on Jesus. I have someone who's going to share about spiritual discipline, so let's go hear from them. All right, everyone, today we are going to be talking about a spiritual discipline. You might be wondering, what spiritual discipline are you talking about? There's nothing on the table in front of you to talk about. Joke's on you. They're all right here. We're talking about reading the Bible. Look, we're in our Dive Deep series where we are looking at wisdom, and this thing is chock full of wisdom. The Bible has everything that God wants us to know about who he is, what he has done, what he will do. That's right here in these 66 books. But if you're like me 
and you have a hard time reading through Leviticus or Numbers over here, which is a bunch of laws and, and genealogies, then you have to make it a habit to read the Bible, to read all of the Bible. And that is what is called a spiritual discipline, making a habit of something that is going to bring you closer to God in the way you live your life. So I want to give you just a couple practical tips about reading your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, talk to your leader. Talk to your leader, talk to your parents, get a Bible. There are plenty of Bibles out there that are easy for you to understand at your age and so you can know exactly what truth God is trying to tell you through his word. But I want you to start, if you've never read the Bible before or you've never started reading the Bible as a daily practice before, I want you to get into the spiritual discipline, to get into this habit by reading three, three verses a day. That's it. And once you get to three verses a day, you're gonna be like, oh man, this is kind of easy. I'm reading three verses a day and I want more. And that is a great indication that the Holy Spirit is moving in your life and you have a desire to want to know more about who God is and learn more about what his word says. Your spiritual discipline is bearing fruit. You're growing. It's like a, it's like a tree or a plant that, that has flowers. At first, it's only going to have one or two pieces of fruit or one or two flowers. But the more that you work on this tree, the more you water it, the more you prune back the dead parts, the more you shape it to look like how you want it to look, more fruit, more flowers are going to bloom and are going to grow. The same is true for your life and spiritual disciplines, practicing spiritual disciplines, are the way that you prune that plant or or shape it how you want it or give it water to give it life. So next time you go home and you grab your Bible, whether it's a brand new Bible or it's one you've been reading for a while, speaking of in our series Dive Deep, I want you, wherever you're at, to go one step further in your practice of reading the Bible every day. For, for some of you, that may, may mean you need to start reading your Bible every day. And like I said, three verses. For some of you, you might already read your Bible every day and maybe you read a chapter a day. I want you to take it a step further and not just read a chapter every day, but read that same chapter multiple times. See if anything stands out to you that's new and then start writing it down. That might be the next phase in your spiritual discipline growth. Now, like I said, Sometimes there's parts of the Bible that are like really, really hard to get through. But it's in these times, before we read our Bible, before we give up on our spiritual discipline because it's boring or it's hard or, or it's not connecting with us that day, those are the times that we can stop, take a deep breath, and ask God for wisdom in order to hear what he is trying to tell us through his spirit. Just like our memory verse says, we can ask God for wisdom and he wants to give it to us. So when you're practicing your spiritual discipline of reading the Bible, stop first, ask God for wisdom, ask him to show you something new, something exciting and something amazing about who he is and watch as he jumps out of the pages. Never stop growing in wisdom. Growing in wisdom is like a growing tree. It starts out small, like a small seed, but eventually it will grow to be many, many, many times its size. It will be completely transformed. Jesus wants to completely transform our minds too. When you have a thought, ask yourself, is it true? Ask if it is good or right. Spend time feeding your brain with good things so that it can transform your thinking. Memorize verses right here from the Bible. Listen to good and beautiful stories and shows and music. When your thinking becomes anxious or or overwhelmed, don't ignore that. Transform it by asking God for wisdom. Or go to a wise and trusted adult who can point you towards what is true. That way, you will never stop growing in wisdom. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your word, for the Bible, God, where you get to show us that we are to transform our minds and that we're to go to you, we're to think of things that are lovely, things that you've created, God, that are good so that our minds can be transformed. We can go to your word, we can memorize what you've said to us through the Bible, God, so that our lives can be filled with wisdom that we're growing in every single 
day. So God, be with us today as we go out into this world to try to grow in wisdom to know you more. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I know that I will always have things to learn and grow in as I grow up, but wisdom is one of the top things that I want to keep growing in. Same here. Growing in wisdom is a great thing to make a habit of by reading God's Word, praying, and being in community with wise people. I'm thankful that God is always ready to give us wisdom and always wants to give us wisdom. Me too. That means that we can keep growing forever. One way we could thank Jesus is by talking to Him through prayer. Another way we can show thankfulness is through our offering. When we give our offering money, we're telling God and others that He is the most important thing. The cool part about offering is that you can actually offer a lot of things. Most of the time, we give back to God by giving our money, but we can also give back to God by giving your time. This means instead of choosing to be selfish with your time and your things, you might choose to help other people like Jesus says to. When we give our offering of time, we show others that they are more important than us. And that's exactly what God tells us to do. You can talk to your parents and leaders about giving your offering today. Now, we get to grow together. You might jump into community groups, or you might jump into worship, but either way, we're growing towards Jesus together. Let's go.
Standing on ancient truth I'm pressing on With my back to the past And oh Let the young see visions of the future And I sing oh Stride with you Oh, bursting like heaven in motion And Jesus, you make me new I'm pressing on With my back to the past and Oh, let the young see visions of the future And I sing with friends is the very best. I love getting to learn and worship all together. Me too. I hope that you guys have a great week and that you join us next time for some more learning. But for now, we're going to send you into the week with one hope, one life, in Christ. Christ. Bye, everyone. Bye, friends.